The world is in desperate need of people like yourself, early cutting edge AI adopters that have spent hundreds of hours with the technology and understand it deeply. See, while we've had a weird fixation for the past four years, the rest of the world is just starting to get clued into how powerful and potent AI really is. To put it simply, they need clear and easy lessons from people like you so that they can learn how to be the most productive in this new world. You might be sitting back and thinking, well, whose job is this? Because you, Matthew, well, that's your job. I know, it is my job. Mostly, I make videos and I love doing it. But lately, I've been experimenting with courses. You can see I've built the beginnings of a course, the fundamentals of prompting an AI interaction, and I want to take you through my process today. Full disclosure, I did indeed build this course in Teachable, and Teachable did sponsor today's video. But I gotta say, guys, after building multiple lessons in Teachable, I was able to make them all for free, and the only time I actually have to pay for a plan is if I I want to list my course for money to actually build profit. Before I dive into the nitty gritty of how I built it though, let's actually see what I built. Some of you guys might agree or disagree with certain things, but I'm going to try to explain everything to the best of my abilities and why I made the decisions I did. I've got a nice visual metaphor. I used SeaDream 4.0 to generate this image. As you can see, the conductor is creating this giant ethereal prompt, which is then controlling all of these LLM instruments. And this whole orchestra is supposed to essentially represent the LLM. LLM, which then produces your output. You're a conductor and the LLM is your orchestra. With the right prompts, you can turn chaos into symphony. Why do tiny changes in phrasing produce wildly different outputs? By learning which primitive you are manipulating when prompting, you'll become much better at it. We then move into core vocabulary where I introduce all these primitives. You can see they are on the technical side, so we're linking the prompting to the very science of how LLMs work. A lot of you at home might be sitting there thinking, hey, I don't need to learn any of this stuff to learn how to prompt an LLM correctly, and you'd be right. The reason I want people to learn from the very first and deep principles of how LLMs truly work under the hood is because with this course, I wanted to give people the skills that they need to truly understand why the LLM is outputting like it does in a given scenario. And with that more baseline understanding, it will be theoretically easier for people to understand in their heads how these fundamentals can be easily abstracted to problems in their day-to-day -day life. As you can see, we've also got a quick and easy one-page chart so folks can save it for later and then we move into a worked example immediately. And of course, this is something that people could follow along with at home. Real hands-on practice. First, we ask about gravity. We let the model just spit something out. I note that with no additional context or additional instructions, essentially the fine-tuning itself and the model has to produce a satisfactory answer. We then add a couple of constraints and we talk about how conditions conditioning narrow the distribution to give us this result. Then we meet our first required activity. The answer is literally up here. And yeah, some of these might seem very easy and simple for you because you already know about AI, but to people who have never even heard of the technicals before, this is all going to be new stuff. After that, we've got a quick little quiz. Again, pretty easy for us because we already know all about AI. This one is a little bit more tricky. Little quizzes like this force knowledge application. Finally, to end this lesson off, I did a couple of common pitfalls, talk about how certain prompts can be a little bit too vague, only change one variable at a time so you know what caused the change. Instead of writing a brief story, we want a brief bedtime story. Finally, end off with some references, and that is lesson one. Now, lesson two is very, very much similar. Obviously, things get a little bit more complicated through up to lesson three, but it's similar style, an explanatory paragraph, vocab, savable map, hands-on demonstration, tasks, and quizzing. You can see at this point, we're getting now even into talking about temperature and top P sampling. So, how did I use AI to build a course? Well, Teachable makes it very easy. You can see when I go to edit the curriculum, this entire section is simply the introduction and it contains these three lessons. 
I can always swap and move these around, and if I want to edit one, I simply click it. Then you can see that there are even more separate blocks. This one is text and images, for example. Here is the quiz down here, or the open-ended question. The bulk of the lesson, obviously, to teach all the definitions and go into everything, is just text and images. The one-page map and all of these canonical worked examples. Do you think I just wrote all this straight off the dome? Nope. Of course, this was a collaborative effort between me and AI. GPT-5 thinking was my go-to here, and I carefully crafted this prompt over time. It's very specific. We've got the role philosopher, engineer, and educator produce a rigorous practical explanation of understanding via first principles. The actual objective here, though, is to demonstrate the method end-to-end -end on this topic in relation to communication with LLMs. So, understand via first principles and LLMs. LLMs. Essentially, take these two concepts, dig deep into your LLM brain, conduct some research, and bring me back everything you know. In the output, you can see on the left-hand side, we have reasoning trace. This is so I can essentially double-check the AI's work, make sure that everything that is going on here makes sense to me and can be verified. On the right-hand side, you can see the final deliverables, or the good bits. I specifically asked for some definitions, which connections are the most important to keep a few worked examples. I even had it make a few new hypotheses to keep the context of the chat fresh with new ideas. So this first step with this first prompt is essentially getting all the information that we need and checking to make sure it's good. The next prompt is to then take all of this output in a second step with a similar but different prompt, produce an elite industry ready online course outline. And this is for the entire course, right? Because it's just an outline. It doesn't get deep, deep into the weeds. So it shows off module one with three lessons, and then there would theoretically be more modules with the repeated structure. Anyways, we got a really nice course overview here. It's a lot more deep and detailed than what I actually produced in Teachable, but with outlines, typically AI likes to shoot for the stars. Course overview, narrative spine, syllabus at a glance. So you can see at the start of module one, this is where all of the key information that I actually used to create the end result stems or roots its DNA from. A lot of these different pieces, very reminiscent, very similar to the beginning of that first lesson. These are kind of the main big ideas, but they're fleshed out in a lot more detail in the final result. Highlighted a specific section, I said, hey, basically, this isn't good enough. I want it more like a textbook. By this point, the lesson was ready to essentially be copy-pasted over to Teachable, where I reworded, tweaked, adjusted, and put my own flair into it. Just opening with the learning objective, for example, and not really explaining things at all definitely wasn't my cup of tea, so that's something I changed. I kept the vocabulary almost exactly the same though. The chart was also copy pasted over. You can see the canonical example is pretty close, but a few things were changed. And you guys are also going to remember from the example, I made sure that I included screenshots of actually running all of this stuff through an LLM so that you can understand it without having to do it yourself and also to actually prove that I know what I'm talking about. If we're tweaking prompts in an LLM and asking people to change things in a real example, that they are going to get the correct learning experience with visual proof. So for the lesson, it's basically copy paste, refresh, add extra details, double check and do the work yourself. Now, by the way, these little chat boxes box images are pretty cool and actually work really great as uploadable examples in textbooks or online courses. That would be this website right here. So Hermes 4 on Noose Research, pretty great for these little tutorials or step-by-step -step LLM guides. I literally use just the snipping tool in Windows to screenshot these windows. And of course, if any model settings need to be changed, that can all be done right in this website. So it was the perfect match. You'll see some of the things that the AI produced, I didn't end up keeping like this mini lab template. Not that it's bad, it just doesn't really work with the online course that we're trying to build. There's no good way for me to set this up as a lab space. Someone who's taking the course can 
easily use. But I think chat GPT is more imagining printing all of this out on paper and giving it to like college students. So once I ended up with a lesson I was genuinely happy with, I took screenshots of all of those lessons and I sent them to chat GPT in a reply. I said, hey, I'm ready for lesson two, but rewrite them in this format. Basically, since we've already built lesson one in the structure that we know we like, of course, in collaboration with chat GPT, making our own personal tweaks, it can now infer the whole thing and rewrite lesson two in that format. Hopefully this time the copy and paste will be a little bit closer to exactly what I would want, leaving less work for us at the end of the day. It didn't listen fully, and to be fair this is a pretty weak prompt, but definitely a little bit better and I sent it on through. Some things like the hands-on example I toned down a little bit because ChatGPT likes to focus on JSON code examples and things that I think might confuse people a little bit. I didn't want to have numbers and percentages flying all over the screen, creating extra confusion. But truly, ChatGPT helped out with a big chunk of the entire thing. A cool feature here on Teachable is at the end of creating all your lessons, all you have to do is click this section summary button and it will automatically make you a final block in here that is essentially a, a summary of your lessons. So at the end of each chunk, like the introduction, I can basically have an auto-generated summary. The Teachable AI here does a decent job. You can also make course content directly with Teachable's AI assistant. You can see though it is experimental. I've noticed that it's pretty quick and can outline things well. but even if I were to just try to put just that single prompt to generate the course overview, that prompt is almost 5,000 characters out of the 600 you're allowed to upload into your lesson topic. So for me personally, it felt a little bit limiting, at least in terms of this interface. I like the casual, neutral, or formal formality settings, and I like that you can pick how long it's going to write, but three paragraphs is not enough. I honestly think right now collaboratively working with ChatGPT is going to be your fastest way and most efficient way to create legitimately valuable course content that is backed by both you and the AI. If you're wondering how I made the thumbnail, the text perfect here, AI fundamentals prompting an interaction online course with my face, simply used Gemini 2.5 flash image gen, aka nano banana, available for free in Gemini. Literally all I had to do was upload a photo of myself with a pretty basic prompt and bam, there is the output. All you have to do is remove the little Gemini logo from the bottom corner. By the way, here is a secret if you're on Windows, simply click edit on the image, go to erase, and then highlight that little Gemini logo and it will disappear. <laughs> I've definitely got a lot of takeaways from this project. First of all, making an educational course is definitely more work than I thought, but I can also be a little bit more of a perfectionist. Still though, using the power of AI, I'd say it only took me about six to eight hours to make three lessons it would easily take two or three times longer than that without AI. In terms of teaching people how to use AI, my preference is always going to be making video content, but something that you can take at your own pace and easily pick right up where you left off is definitely going to do it for the majority of people that want to learn a little bit more about AI. I was really happy to see that I could make everything for free. Draft and conversate with ChatGPT, Teachable to actually build the course, Noose Research website for examples, the opportunity is absolutely accessible. I think a lot of people have interests and excitements that they just don't see being profitable or potentially becoming a support system, but it absolutely is possible and this is one of the ways to do it. If you know all about specific AI workflows, specific prompting techniques, or even something else, the resources are in front of us and available to take everything that you've learned and make your mark on the world teaching other people what you've learned. From experience, I can say it can become something stable and even profitable. So that's my spiel on why you guys should become AI educators and how you can get started building free AI courses. Huge thanks to Teachable for sponsoring today's video. And of course, massive thanks to you guys for watching today's video. I'll see you guys in the next one and goodbye.